Governor Rise, take it away. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, my name is Jal Bagel. I speedrun Monster Hunter games. I do full game uh, speedrunning. Joining me on the couch are DJ Johnny. Say hi, Johnny. Hi, everyone. G Willikers, I'm glad to be here. <laughs> uh, and Green Speed. Hello. Green Speed's going to be helping me out with a lot of the technical stuff in this game. Um, there is a lot that happens all of the time, and we're going to be talking a lot about it, but we're going to cut out a lot of the other stuff, too. Um, so, really quick. Uh, we had a, a bid war for the Palico and the Palamute uh, designs. Can we get a, um, a decision on that? Uh, sure, just one moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no problem. I'm going to set up my Huntress real quick. And this is a this is a hundred percent RNG manipulation right here, right? We have to use teal hair because it is the strongest hairstyle in the game, and how I get all of my whoops world records. And of course, I messed it up right there. But teal pompadour manipulation. Uh, All right. Well, if you are ready, it looks like we are indeed have the Palico and Palamute designs. Okay. And it, sound, and it looks like in the lead with $5,223 is going to be none other than Link and Zelda. Nice. I know Green's really happy about this because his favorite color is, well, green. Uh, so there's Link. Uh, he is going to be our Palamute, which was an addition uh, added to Monster Hunter Rise. Uh, and we'll go ahead and name him that too, Link. Um, you may have noticed too that I named my hunter uh, just the letter M. Uh, the hunter's name actually saves time, just making it one character. I think like Pokemon. Uh, so actually, whoops, actually just naming it one letter saves time on text loading, um, which we won't really talk too much about. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll get into it. Um, but yeah, I, I, the other thing too is that we're playing in Japanese. Japanese clears text the fastest, and there's a lot of text in the beginning of this game. It saves like two minutes, uh, which is kind of wild. Uh, so, and there's also a bunch of other menuing and stuff too. But I, I think we're ready, uh, if, if you guys are. <laughs> Let's do it. In three, two, one, go. All right, Green, so what are we doing at the very beginning of this game? Uh, we are going to be going around town and talking to all the NPCs just so they can teach us what the village does. Now, if you're familiar with the Monster Hunter series, you may be thinking there's not really a lot of movement tech. And until Monster Hunter Rise, you would be right, but this game did actually introduce a new feature called the wire bug, which you may have seen Bagel just use there, that little blue strand he was moving on, and you'll see it again here. This is going to be... Uh, this, in combination with the new Palamute mount, uh, is going to be our primary form of movement through this game, which is a drastic improvement compared to previous Monster Hunter games where we could just walk and nothing else. Yeah, so, and, and something to note about Monster Hunter games, too, is that these games aren't, like, glitch-heavy, though we did have a glitch day one um, on uh, Rise's release on Switch, um, though it was taken out very quickly. It was item duping, and it was very good. Um, but this game isn't uh, glitch-heavy. Say hi to Utsushi, he's pretty. Uh, it's just a lot of technical prowess, right? Whoops, almost did that again. And that's there. Uh, just some menuing to change. Uh, but one more notable thing, I'm not going to talk about the other things too much because they're kind of non-consequential, uh, but we are playing on, whoops, the most recent version of the game. Uh, and if you guys are familiar with Monster Hunter, that is the Sunbreak DLC that came out today. Uh, so just really quick, I want to say thank you to Capcom for providing, uh, providing me with early access to be able to practice this yesterday uh, so I could show you guys uh, one trick. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it, it's super cool that they were able to do that for me, and it was really last minute, too. I was at work trying to work with one of the community managers to get it, and my controller disconnected. Oh, there we go. It's fine. We go really fast. Uh, there, my controller disconnected again. Table's doing really well. Uh, so this is Senri. This is Senri the mailman. Uh, he just gave us every item in the game, uh, and now we're OP. Uh, <laughs> uh, this category, as I mentioned uh, during the interview with Spike Vegeta, allows for a subset of items called add-ons, and we just redeemed all of them. So that's uh, two armor sets and a weapon. It takes out a lot of the RNG associated with the game uh, and makes it so we don't have to grind out an armor or a weapon. Um, 
which would usually require hunting a monster multiple times and farming up money. And, uh, you know, it, we're, it, that's, just, that's just something that we don't want to do. So instead, the game gives us uh, literally speedrun gear. Uh, it's gear actually designed to help new players get to the end of the game as fast as possible. And, I mean, we're going to do that. <laughs> um, to kind of talk about the progression through the game, um, we have to follow key quests. I can't move my controller around too much. This cable does not like what I'm doing to it. Uh, just give me one second here. Oops. OK. I wanted to stay on that dog, but it's OK. Just a little too far away from Utsushi there. Uh, but yeah, the dog you can see is a really big like mobility thing. Uh, but Green, can you talk to us a little bit about uh, key quests and how we're going to be progressing through the game? Uh, yes, absolutely. So uh, we will be going through four ranks of this game, uh, one through four star. Uh, currently, we are about to enter one star. Every rank has a set of required quests known as key quests. And every rank has a number of those key quests you have to complete always one fewer than the amount available. So a lot of our routing in this game is going to be around which key quest in each rank is the worst one, so we don't have to do that one. A lot of our decision making around that depends on the type of quest, uh, whether it's a gathering quest, a small monster quest, or a large monster quest. Gathering quests are always going to be our priority, but they're also the rarest kind of quest. Um, the reason we like gathering quests, as you'll see in the next quest, is um, Every gathering point is in the same location. The only RNG involved is how many items you'll get from each spot. So there is a limit to how much time you can lose to RNG. Small monsters, um, they don't have a lot of health. They always spawn in the same location. But once you get to them, they can move around while you're trying to kill them. So a little slower than gathering. And then the most common type of hunt is a large monster hunt. Um, large monster hunts have significantly more RNG associated with them, not only in their move sets and the AI they can use, but um, with where they spawn on the map. Every monster has three different locations on the map it can spawn. Um, one location that happens 60% of the time, one that happens 30% of the time, and one that happens 10% of the time. Um, and depending on which location you can get, you can save or lose uh, up to 30 seconds. <laughs> depending on the quest. <laughs> yeah, it's a RNG fest, to say the least. And we have a lot of ways of mitigating that, but monster spawn location is not one of them. Um, another really big RNG point is small monsters. Uh, even in our large monster quests, ooh, good RNG. Even in our large monster quests, uh, small monsters can be quite troublesome. So, you know, there's really nothing that we can do about it uh, other than just adjusting to the uh, RNG. And so kind of like how I was mentioning earlier, there's not a lot of glitches. There's not a lot of skips or anything like that. It is just a uh, high skill, high knowledge level uh, you know, kind of speed run. Uh, just a marathon safe strat here. I'm going to skip this uh, pickup for this lantern. This is one of those gathering quests that Green was talking about. And uh, one of our objectives is to gather uh, these berries called fire lanterns. Um, there is a chance that that pickup will actually provide all the ones that I need to complete the uh, quest. And the moment that that happens, I have 20 seconds to do everything else that I want to do. <laughs> um, but just for marathon safety, I'm actually going to finish up gathering all of my route and go to the uh, last two locations. They guarantee uh, at least three. Whoops. Uh, controller doing stuff there, but it's OK. Recovered. That's just style. All right, so we have six. So this last spot can give uh, zero or three. Uh, we want two, at least. And the quest will end. Nope, we didn't get it. So there's just one more for backup over here. Um, that's kind of unfortunate. This loses like 35 seconds, actually. Uh, and after Bagel collects this last berry, um, it will trigger the end quest timer, which he will be using to do some menuing. And still got fanfare skip. Nice. Um, so fast traveling at the very end of the 
quest. Thank you, thank you. Casterling at the very end of the quest uh, actually saves eight seconds. Um, there is a fanfare animation where you pet your Palico, Palamute, you kind of celebrate for finishing the quest. Um, actually getting that menu in uh, is super tight because that's how we're going to manage all of our resources throughout the entire run. Uh, and not doing it there means we have to sadly do it back in the in the hub village, back in Kimura. And while everyone's watching us set up that menu, you know, we sulk about it. Um, but here we are just moving on with our second key quest of One Star. This is uh, Mushrooms, as I like to call it. Um, mushrooms can be kind of RNG heavy. You know, all of your gathering quests kind of are, but um, there's at least consistent ways to finish them. Uh, it's just getting them done fast is 100% is RNG. Uh, so world record attempts uh, are actually kind of held behind from this RNG, which is really unfortunate. Do you have time for a quick donation? Absolutely. All right. Well, we have a special $10 from Katie that says, so proud of you, Jal. Good luck. Thank you so much, Katie. Um, so after this, though, we will have our first uh, urgent mission. Ooh, zero on that one. That's unfortunate. Uh, just kind of trying to keep track of the RNG here, right? We want to make sure that we can finish this uh, with all of the ones that are available. And I'm not doing so hot here. This will give two, the next one will give two, and I believe the last one will give two as well. Uh, so we should be OK. But usually, I would expect the quest to actually end with that last gathering spot. Um, so just subpar RNG, but this kind of happens. It actually happens a lot in practice. one more location over here. Um, Green, I kind of zoned out. You talked about like capturing and stuff like that, right? Uh, I have not yet. Oh, cool. We can talk about that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so the next quest, like Bagel mentioned, is our first urgent quest. That is the quest that unlocks the next rank for us. It is also our first large monster quest. Um, something that you may not know about this game is any large monster quest can actually be ended in one of two ways. There's killing the monster, which is what you'd expect. You hunt the monster down to zero HP, it dies. And then the game gives you a 60 second end timer to loot its body for rewards. There is actually a second way to end it though, which is capturing the monster. Um, that's what we've been gathering all these resources for. Capturing the monster only requires you to hunt it down to 30% of its HP. And at that point you can use a trap and tranquilizers on it. That will end the quest immediately and not only save you the uh, 30% of the monster's health, but it also shortens the end timer from 60 seconds down to 20 seconds. So that's a guaranteed 40 second time save on every single hunt. So whenever possible, we are going to be trying to capture large monsters. Yeah, and, and at the very beginning of every quest, I'm kind of identifying what spawn location I got. Um, I did get spawn A for this great Azuchi. That's the 60% spawn. Um, and I will be using these red items on my item bar. They are power items. Um, long story short, each one of them provides an attack buff, including this bug right here that I just uh, slapped. Um, <laughs> each one provides a power buff that lasts about uh, two to three minutes. Each one kind of varies. Um, and we will take those buffs into the fight with us for Great Azuchi. Uh, now, for some of these early fights, I know exactly how much damage I need to do. One of the things, uh, one of the questions asked is, you know, how do you reduce the AI and the kind of kind of mitigate, you know, the the RNG associated with the game, and it's it's with this weapon, Switch Axe. Green, can we, we, we literally just talked about explaining this earlier, but can you explain it now? Yes. So you may notice that there are two sword icons under Bagel's health and stamina. We're specifically interested in the one on the right. There's that inner gauge that's currently green. That's his morph gauge. That, con that controls what mode of the axe he can be in. He wants to keep that gauge as full as possible so that he can utilize the second outer gauge that's making that whole sword glow. If that outer gauge is glowing, he has access to an attack called Zero Sum Discharge, or ZSD. That's what makes Switch Axe so consistent, because as you can see right here, it latches onto the monster and deals consistent damage. So as long as we can land the first hit of ZSD, we get stuck onto the monster and given super armor. So regardless of what it does next, we're just going to keep doing our damage. So up in the top left corner, you can see a blue uh, like skull icon under the monster's uh, name, old well, name plate. Uh, that is called Blue Skull, and Blue Skull tells me the monster is capture ready. Uh, it can actually be captured beforehand, and uh, we can damage it while it's in the trap. Um, <laughs> once again, should have tested this uh, this cable beforehand. Uh, I'm getting the, the controller is disconnecting every now and then, but I have a chance to fix it later. Uh, there's an unskippable cutscene, and I have a second. I have a second cord, so we're gonna do a hot swap. <laughs> um, 
but that's going to be a little later in. Uh, so that's the end of, of uh, First Star, and that Great Azuchi actually marks the beginning of Second Star. Uh, so already we're, we're moving right through the ranks, uh, and we're going to be doing a gathering quest here. This is Oysters. Um, we actually re-equipped an armor set at the end of that hunt. Uh, it's the Guild Cross armor set, and this armor set allows us to gather more um, mining outcrops and uh, o oysters are mined, apparently, so this will give us more oysters. It makes sense, trust me. Um, ideally, this is finished in three gathers. Like, that's the best, fastest world record strat RNG. Uh, you know, it'd, it'd be nice. It'd be nice to see some good RNG, especially after those lanterns that we had. Uh, so if we get four here, we're on track. Oh, no, okay, we got one. <laughs> Thanks, game. Uh, but there are plenty of backups. It just means it takes a little bit longer. Um, I've already grabbed one of these. And I didn't explain it earlier, but that was a relic. Uh, there are these like little little notes and messages hidden around the uh, maps. There's 10 each map. Um, and every time you pick up one, you get 1,000 Komodo points. Uh, we can exchange those Komodo points for a variety of items and services in Komodo. And so we will be exchanging them for pitfall traps, which are going to be our main form of trapping during this run. And it's going to give us every single pitfall trap that we need. So it's, it, it's just guaranteed resources. Uh, it was actually one of the first uh, items routed into, like put into the route because the very first step in RTA is how do we get all of our traps, right? You know, every, every RTA Monster Hunter speed run is how do we get all of our traps and how do we trap every single monster? That's always the first step. Um, and so that was the, the first step here, please. Okay, thank you. <laughs> There's a chance that it doesn't give any. And then I have to go find the other one. <laughs> Uh, but that is just that gathering quest. Uh, we have a chance here to do some inventory management. Um, and so at the end of each quest, I'm going to be jumping back into the camp to do inventory management. And uh, we'll, we'll kind of like, you know, uh, pass over that because it's all going to become the same stuff. Just replace the items that we uh, already used. Um, but now we move on to baggies, and baggies are the only quest that we'll do that has a 60 second end timer. Um, and. Uh, Oddly enough, that works out well for us because we're going to use that 60 seconds to gather all of the sleep herbs that we need, uh, which will give us all of the other material to capture every monster. Oops, I just came off that at a weird angle, but it's okay. Um, so small monsters are great. They have exploitable AI. When you attack one in a pack, uh, the other two will come running towards you, but then what they do after that is kind of up in the air. Uh, you can see that they the other two ran to me and then just kind of went and did their own thing immediately afterwards. Um, but this level is really cool because it gets to showcase some really cool wire bug movement. Uh, that's a new sunbreak change, which I absolutely love, where the dog can just spawn underneath you and then you can start riding it. I love that. Um, but this quest is uh, is nice, you know, because at the very end we get to see some like cool movement, and that's the only time. Uh, you know, I, I kind of use some of it a little bit on uh, a a mission later called the Rampage. Can you please just stand in front of me? Thank you, and stop trying to throw sleep at me. These guys are mean because they can put you to sleep while you're trying to fight them. <laughs> just get hit by a rogue baggy sleep sleep cough, and then you're on the ground sleeping in the middle of a speed run. Uh, so this is the last pack, and then I'll have to get one more, uh, and then we can do all of our gathering. And that's kind of like the bulk of the gathering sections in this game. Um, every now and then I'll grab a resource that's close um, just to kind of keep up with materials. But for the most part, it's just going to be jumping in a quest, hunting a monster, and moving on. And that's really where the, uh, the, the skill and decision making and understanding a monster's AI and how they, how they fight and how they attack really comes into play. Uh, where are you going, ma'am? All right, we, uh, this is fine. This is fine. We got, we got, we got, we got so much time at the end of this. This is fine. Some break change there too. That was nice. Uh, I'll probably only have like ten seconds at the end of this, so I can't do a big restock. Like I said, this is just a neat little wire bug movement, and we can kind of show how the different tech actually works. Uh, you know, what we can use to get height versus what we can use to get uh, distance. 
It's just it's just a nice little little showcase of tech there, and that's about the only time that that happens. <laughs> Which is super unfortunate because it's such a cool like little movement thing, but yeah, it becomes uh, kind of irrelevant when we don't have the gather anymore. Uh, just checking resources, we're good because uh, I restocked in the last one. Uh, oh, I needed to change equipment there. We can just do that back at Komoda. That was the uh, only other thing. Uh, but we'll we'll just do it back here. Uh, the other th nice thing about that quest is that it gives uh, a billion sleep herbs, too. So in case we didn't get enough sleep herb, uh, we can get it off of that, too. Uh, have to take some unfortunate movement here and re-equip my, my armor here. Right, so this, this black belt armor, I was talking about it again uh, with the add-ons category. It has um, a skill called Attack Boost 4. Not only does it increase our base attack, it also gives a 5% bonus to that attack score, too. Uh, good spawn on the baggie. What's really nice, too, is that you're, uh, every, at the beginning of every quest, I'm locking onto the monster, so you can see kind of like that reticle that appeared over that question mark. Um, the first option, the far left in, the, in like that top corner of, of, uh, of like little portraits there, those hidden portraits, that's always your target monster. Super nice information to have when you don't know where your monster spawn is. Uh, but the other thing that is nice, too, is that each spawn kind of looks a little different. Uh, so it's... You know, I, at this point, I can tell where each monster is, but, you know, that's also just, like, a nice little backup to have. Uh, Baggy's are really similar to Great Azuchi. All I have to do is just get two ZSDs off on this guy. If he doesn't move here, we get really good. Yeah, we got it. Nice. Right. Uh, so that's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> and that's kind of RNG. Uh, oh, he's standing still. Oh my goodness, you are behaving. Oh my gosh. Nope. Okay, I messed up. <laughs> Get there. Uh, but this is nice. We got a we got a topple. Mm, controller disconnected. We will hot swap you soon. I promise. But it's okay. We can fix this. And we got it back. Um, so especially fighting with switch axe. Man, it happened again. It's okay. We got blue. back here. Uh, so we're going to use a Shock Trap here. He ran immediately out of it. Sweet. All right, cool. He fell into it. So Shock Traps go down faster than Pitfall Traps, but uh, they don't hold the monster still nearly as long. All right, note to self, throw this cable away when I get home. Can we move? Can we move? No? Okay, cool. Controller's just vibrating. Sick. Uh, we just want to grab that right there. And I'm not going to leave here just so we don't mess up fanfare skip. So um, this stamp right here, we just call this the, the quest stamp. Uh, that takes about two to four seconds longer. It, it, it's like two seconds longer uh, if we don't do the, the fanfare skip because uh, it actually makes that like little stamp animation faster too. Um, I get to hot swap my, my cable here. And uh, Muffin, you can read off some donations right now too. Well, excellent. Do this. Well, we have a ton of love coming in from the community. You're doing an excellent job, Jal Bagel. So first, we have $50 from Regal Eagle that says, Hey, a bagel, may your speedrun be as fast as a certain rocket-powered Elder Dragon that I love so much. Thank you, and Regal. may the ZSDs not cancel into the walls. Well, <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> we also have $50 from Game Therapy LA that says, Super excited to see Monster Hunter on the GDQ stage for the first time. Good luck to the runner, and don't forget to pet your Palamute. Oh, we will. <laughs> We also have $1,000 from Calaris. <laughs> Woo! And they say, I've been watching for years, and what better time to pay it forward than during one of my favorite games? Let's do what we can to make that donation total rise and let the sun break <laughs> over a new record. Let's go. Thank you guys so much. Uh, so the hot swap worked. Let's <laughs> see if this cable works. This is actually Green's charging cable. Um, so this is the buddy area. And yeah, he already has more dogs that we get to recruit. Dogs are good because dogs do damage. Uh, cats are nice because they do utility stuff. Oh, we got new ears too. That's actually one of the, the new ear styles in Sunbreak. We got a new dog. Um, and then this is what I was talking about earlier. We're going to use all of our Komodo points to get all of those nets, which are going to become pitfall traps. So we're pretty much set item-wise for the rest of the run. Uh, I'm going to let Green talk about Acnosome and why it's such a pivotal moment in the run, and I'm going to pay attention to doing this right. Absolutely. So Acnosome itself isn't a super unique fight. It, it's a little annoying, but it's just a monster. The special thing about Acnosome is what happens after the fight, because it unlocks what's called a switch skill, which allows us to change one of the moves in our moveset out for another. Um, 
So it's going to allow us to change a move that we haven't even used because it's effectively useless into an attack that'll allow us to chain ZSDs together more efficiently. You may have noticed after every ZSD, we've gone flying off the monster and had to just take it, land on the ground, slowly recover. We're going to gain access to a move that allows us to, rather than flying off slowly, dash directly back into the monster and deal damage to it. With style. With yes. style. That's why I always say about Switch Axe that it's the king of style. Um, so uh, I probably won't make too much mention about spawn location unless it's a particularly bad spawn. This is a common spawn, but it's also not the best one. Um, but we just kind of got to stay really close here. That's just really good game knowledge. I knew that the dog would get the flinch after that. And then now we're just going for an exhaust flinch or a head topple. We didn't get it, unfortunately. That would have been a really good knockdown while it was in the air. Uh, he just lands. All right, cool. Should be a flinch there. Nice. Just wait for that head to be back in position so we can land this. So one thing to notice, about, uh, to note about ZSD, the zero-sum discharge, me attaching to the monster and dealing all that damage, we have super armor. And super armor is super nice, but we still take damage. Um, the other th the thing about this weapon is that it has an exhaust file, which means if we hit the head, we can KO the head. And that was a KO topple right there. Um, I don't know what it's going to quite do yet, so I'm just going to heal for safety. Because uh, imagine carding at GDQ. We just aren't going to do that. It's not allowed. Uh, no roar, unfortunately. I think I skipped the roar. Oh, just kind of flank it here. And again. Um, but you can kind of tell that once we lose uh, our amp state, this glowing state, we kind of lose pressure, especially without Soaring Wyvern Blade. If we can get this dunk, we got it. Nice. nice. Uh, that dunk is huge because it also gives me an opportunity to use a pitfall instead of a shock here, and shocks are seriously limited. I also need it to be captured so I don't die. Nice, and we only <laughs> had like three health left. Not even close. That's the, that's the incredibly greedy goblin brain that I'm always in. I'm always in a mindset of, of PBing and world recording, so uh, I'm just going to apologize now for when I cart later uh, and, do, and do dumb things. Uh, carting effectively loses like 35, 40 seconds. It's bad, so, and we'll try to not do that, but it, it's switch axe. We don't have control over that sometimes. <laughs> uh, so that is the beginning of three star. We've done one star, we've done two star. All that's left is three and four star. We are cruising through this game, and now we are unlocking our first switch skill, Soaring Wyvern Blade. It's gonna be the only one that we unlock in this game, because the other ones are tied behind. Um, other crafting requirements, which just take too long, take a lot of resources. We just aren't going to do that. We don't need to. Uh, but that's what all of these are. Every weapon gets a switch skill right here. Um, and like we kind of talked about before, there are 14 weapons in the game, which makes us a really diverse speedrunning community. Like, honestly, it is so cool to see what other people do with other weapons. Um, I, a few, like, what, two weeks ago, got a world record with a 104.47, or 104.47, and then Literally days later, another Japanese runner, runner, Moss TKM, got world record a minute and a half faster with a different weapon. So it's like absolutely insane what the lower bounds of this game, you know, we're still achieving. And the game's been out for over a year. And then now we have Sunbreak, so things change again. Um, so we actually got the best spawn for Tetronodon here, but it's a really awkward spawn because we're in an area that has a ledge. And uh, if you ever played a monster in a game, ledges are evil and harder than the monsters. Uh, ledges kill you. Just gotta kind of play it safe here. The opener against Tetronodon is not consistent, so I'm just doing kind of something a little bit safer. Uh, but now that we have our ZSD, or, uh, our ZSD going, we can do Soaring Wyvern Blade, which is this! Oh, it's so nice. cool, I love that. So you can see it puts this gigantic blue elemental proc onto the monster's head. That's dealing our file damage, which is this big impact uh, exhaust file. Uh, ouch. Uh, but nice, another stagger. Land that. We're just going to go right back into this and keep up this pressure. That's what this weapon does really well. It keeps up pressure. We're going to end this a little early since I'm not going to be able to do a Swearing Wyvern Blade anyways. Transition and then go straight into a Switch Charger. I don't know if Green talked about Switch Charger, but that's what helps us maintain our charge so we can continue to use Sword Mode. Sword Mode is the mode that we want to be in 100% of the time. Uh, oh, okay, cool. We got our first Wyvern Ride. Green, explain that. Uh, so this is another new mechanic in Monster Hunter Rise um, that allows us to ride the monsters. 
Uh, however, new to Sunbreak is that Wyvern Riding is now completely optional, which is very good for us because while Riding Monsters seems cool in theory, it's actually incredibly slow because it involves a super long animation of getting on the monster. And then once you're on the monster, you really can't do a lot of damage to it. Yeah, that was a really good Tetronodon hunt. That was just full pressure, uh, a good spawn, right? Being able to have the comfort to take advantage of moments like that when you get them in this in this game is really where your, your speed starts to shine, right? Because if you get the good spawn, but then you have a bad fight because you're not consistent at it, it's just throwing away the RNG that you need to get, you know, good times in this game. Time for some donations. Yeah, we can go ahead and do that. All right, well, we have $10 from Not Minty and Sith that reads, who is this runner who's bogging off right now? <laughs> we aren't sure since we aren't Minty and Sith. He's absolutely killing it though. Hunter and Menu God. Bagel Poomp, we love you, bro. We love you too, not Minty and not Shen. And we have an epic $5,000 donation oh. from Fan Gamer. Let's go. They say, hey everybody, Fangamer here. We are so close to reaching that million dollar total. Let's see how quickly we can get there. Now's a great time to hop aboard a $5 donation train. You can also help boost the donation total by shopping the Fangamer SGDQ 2022 merch collection. Until the end of the event, 100% of the profit from sales of GDQ merch goes to on to support MSF as donations just like this one. Check out the full lineup at fangamer.com slash GDQ. And folks, we are just about $19,000 away from hitting that 1 million mark. So why don't we say at the 35 minute mark in this run, let's see that $5 donation train kick off. Choo choo. Ooh, nice, nice dagger there. Okay, yeah, that was a YOLO. I was just trying to see if I couldn't still capitalize on missing that. Um, so Kulu, you've noticed, has picked up two rocks here, and we can take that as a huge opening. This is Kulu Yaku, by the way. I act like everyone knows this game like I do. Uh, <laughs> uh, but Kulu Yaku likes to pick up rocks and pots, and if we can break them, it gives us an opening to capitalize on some damage. Uh, whoops, we haven't been able to like really take advantage of that. One, because I kind of messed up. Uh, this is the 10% spawn, and I never get this spawn. And so when I looked at the map, I was like, ah, yes, the 40%. I'll go there. And then it wasn't. Um, but once Kulu starts kind of moving, his entire front of him becomes a really big hitbox. It's just really difficult to deal with. So we really just want him to be picking up rocks and pots and things so we can uh, break them. And also not get hit by them because they stun us and it hurts. Uh, but breaking it will obviously give us an opening. We just have to wait for that opening now, unfortunately. Nice drop. One, two, and uh, we got it. All right, cool. And that is a blue skull, which we will warp out of. Um, Kulu is a monster that likes to attack the hunter, so we can just put this down. All of his attacks will usually keep him on top of wherever the hunter is. So actually just using a pitfall there is still super safe instead of a, uh, a shock trap. Uh, kind of kind of sloppy. Uh, it's not the best Kulu. You can make him not move forever uh, and then just capture him, and it's really good. Um, the next hunt, <laughs> if you can call it that, is the Rampage. Um, I'll explain the Rampage now so uh, Muffin has all of the time in the world to read all of your guys' donations. Uh, so Rampages are... Uh, you ever played uh, like Balloon Tower Defense? It's that. <laughs> it, it's, it's Tower Defense for Monster Hunter. Um, and it is the weirdest thing that they've ever added to the game. And it has its charm, um, but it is very tedious. This is the tutorial to that too, which is kind of wild. Um, so I'm not going to explain too much when we're going through all the tutorial sequences. I'm just going to let Muffin use this time to uh, do more donations. Wow, excellent. We have so much love from the community pouring in, Bagel. We are starting off with $25 from Sky Guy LP that says, Hey, Bagel, good luck on the run. You got this. Thank you so much, Sky Guy. We also have $50 from Fenico that says, Johnny said the thing. Time to put my money where my mouth is. Good luck on the run, Jal. I love you. Love you too, Kira. Uh, and here we have $25 from Kira Panda that says, Hunters of Kamura, let's hit that 1 million donation mark. Let's go! Woo! Woo!
We also have $10 from Ganarumo that says, Monster Hunter World was my first MH game, and Rise has been a blast so far. I was very surprised seeing the game come up and actually stop playing the game for an hour just to watch this run. Take a second to pet that Palamute. We also have $50 from Blizzard Main that says, Hype for the first Monster Hunter in GDQ in my most played game of 2021. Shoutouts to Jaw Bagel for the run and Muffin for hosting. All right, we also have $5 from Felina that says, had to donate for Monster Hunter Rise. Love SGDQ so far. Can we get some Sunbreak hype? Hype! <laughs> awesome. All right, $50 from Duck says, I am so excited to see a Monster Hunter game at GDQ. It's my favorite game and got my friends and I through the first year of COVID. I'll always treasure the memories I have of beating Elder Dragons with my besties. Hunting Horn for life. Good luck on the run, Jaw Bagel, and happy hunting. You can keep them coming. We got, oh, we got right. so much tutorial. <laughs> wow. Well, we have so many donations here. It's so great. Thank you folks so much. We're raising money for Doctors Without Borders, and we are just about $17,000 away from that 1 million mark with just about 30 plus minutes left in the run itself. So that being said, in just over a minute at that 35 minute mark, go ahead and kick off that $5 donation train and it will be epic and bridge the way to hit that 1 million. Wouldn't that be awesome, audience? Would you believe me if I told you there's still more tutorial? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, awesome. Well, there's more donations as well. With a $1,000 donation from Ike. I'm making this donation for my wife, Kate, who I might never have met if not for Monster Hunter. Such a great set of games that brought us together and so wonderful to finally see them on the national stage today. Let's see world next. And that being said, you don't need to donate 1,000 to contribute to Doctors Without Borders. Every little bit helps. So thank you so much, Ike, for that donation and everybody else who has contributed to such an amazing cause. Let's go. All right, so we actually have movement now. Wild. <laughs> uh, we've been here for a while, and now we can still shoot. We can shoot things now. So the biggest takeaway from from uh, yeah, rampages oh is that there are three different types of monsters that enter: uh, attackers, flyers, and uh, barrier breakers. Uh, they have more eloquent names for them. That's just what I call them. There we go. Bird fall out of the air. Get a KO on that bird, and I unlock the next installment. So we have these little platforms that we can go around to and put installments on, either ones that we can man or ones that NPCs can man or single-use ones that are special, uh, which we'll see one later. Um, I started out with a ballista, and I put down a bunch of NPCs that are also on ballistas. They don't do the most damage, but it's all that we have available right now. Um, I'm going to use this cannon to do something that I didn't even know I could do. <laughs> when I started running this, I, I used another runner's uh, run to see this, and he was shooting off screen. And you can s kind of damage the, uh, the the monsters as they come in using the cannon uh, before they've even come over the, the barrier. Um, one of the bigger parts of the RNG here are going to be these shiny drops, and I, we got the best RNG for that. Let's go. Uh, we needed at least two barrels in this quest. Um, they, they are specifically elemental barrels, so they will always have an element uh, assigned to them. Uh, and we really don't care about that. They deal 300 damage, which is big, right? Uh, that is a lot of damage to these monsters, which they, they have a little bit of bloated stats to them, uh, and they deal an awkward amount of damage. I don't know why they didn't take as much damage as it should. We're going to KO this Tetronodon here, knock this Agnesum out of the air, and then go back to Tetronodon. Tetronodon uh, being in the arena, uh, the, the moment he's repelled from it, will spawn the next attacker. It's just a little speed strat. If we get rid of that Tetronodon as fast as possible, we can then focus on this Agnesome while the attacker comes in, um, and then reset up, charge up these uh, attacks again and repel it as fast as possible. Now, another little piece of information that if you play this game casually, you may not have known, you can put traps down in the rampage. You can't trap these monsters. You can't capture them, right? But you can put down traps. Um, and specifically in this quest, the boss monster for each wave comes out first. So we can take advantage of that, um, have these guys come out, and they just land in this trap immediately. Now, another thing that happens with the 
uh, with the final phase of each of these waves is that we get this mechanic here called a counter signal. And the counter signal is a huge damage buff uh, to every player. Uh, using that in combination of just not letting the monster move, we get to get rid of that boss monster very, very quickly. Um, Muffin, would you believe me if I told you there's more tutorial? Oh, boy. So that means more donations? Yeah, let's do it. All right. $25 from Yam and Carol that says, Go Speed Bagel! Go Speed Bagel! Go Speed Bagel! Go! Thank you so much, Yami. We also have $25 from Sleepy Pyro that says, Super excited to see a Monster Hunter Rise run at GDQ this year. Just in time for Sunbreak. Let's get that purple boy. We also have $10 from Monhun Cake that says, Hey, a bagel friend, it's Cake. It's amazing to see you up here raising money for a great cause and running a great game too. Thank you, Bagel, for helping me get into Monster Hunter World RTA. And thank you, GDQ, for continuing to be amazing. Thank you so much for the donation, Cake. We also have $25 from Yama Carol that says, Oh, whoops, <laughs> I think I already heard that one, my bad. Uh, $500 from Diane of the Moon. As a Meowsive fan of Monster Hunter, I thought it was the perfect time for a donation to the claws. Dogsters Without Borders is an, a meowsing charity, and watching pals play quickly and without pause brings me more delight than some well-done steak. Meowby, we could start a five zenny hunt train? Let's pally go. And indeed, it looks like that $5 trade is still going strong. We are just under 15,000 from hitting 1 million. Keep those coming in. Woo! Fantastic. Uh, just, you, you, can, you can keep going here in a second, but um, I just want to show everyone the best feature of the game to ever be made, ever. Um, I'm just going to do that. I want to sit. Okay, good boy. And perfect. That's it. That's the game. That's the game. That's a, oh, what's going on over there? Uh, don't, uh, don't worry about that. Yeah, well, you know. Uh, they're gone. This is better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so that was Elder Fugan. Uh, he's one of the special uh, installations for this. Uh, it, it's a scripted kind of event. Um, what's really funny is, is that there is a really low chance that the uh, that one of the Arzaros actually doesn't get over the fence by the time he does his attack, and then we have to deal with that. So ever since <laughs> I started petting the dog during this sequence, I kind of look back and like, okay, is everything going all right? All right, cool, thanks. <laughs> Um, so you may notice now our uh, we're off the cannon, uh, which may seem you know unoptimal. Like we aren't doing damage over the wall anymore. Like, isn't that slow? Uh, not necessarily, because this ballista does a lot of damage. We're hitting 16 twice every half a second or so. Uh, plus, we have new installations that are aimed at a specific point. As long as I stop the monsters uh, in those points, those installments will just continue to hit them. So you can see how it's still just clipping that Agnesome's wing there. And then when this uh, Arzuros comes down, I actually just have to keep hitting its head and it'll keep flinching back into both of those uh, Wyvern fire cannons and just keep getting flinched into it and uh, be repelled very quickly. Uh, so now it's the, the boss. We're almost done with the rampage. Um, this is, like I said, it's the tutorial sequence for it. Um, and if I remember correctly, the first time that I did it, it took me 30 minutes. Uh, so just dealing some extra damage there with some of the uh, equipment that the, the Rampage gave me. Once again, there's the counter signal. Just trying to get up to ZSD. Grab onto there. And this should repel the Great Rogi. Oop, Beautiful. Nice. Uh, hey, remember earlier when I told you that the only quest with a 60 second end timer was the baggy, the, the small baggy quest? I, I lied. I'm very sorry, everyone. Um, that, that's on me. You. I know. Uh, I, I can't believe I would do that to you all. Um, this one also has a 60 second end quest timer, but we get to do things during it, um, like manage our buddies. Um, both of the dogs are going to get new passive skills. They're going to get a healing scroll as part of one of their equipments. Um, and then I'm going to change their AI from balanced to follow. Um, it's a small, very tiny, very insignificant uh, kind of optimization to do there. Um, but what Balance does is that the, uh, the Palamute will do a combination of attacking the monster and staying next to you, um, wherever the AI for the game sees fit. We changed it to follow, so if we disengage from the monster, they come with us. 
Um, it is just a small optimization to keep the Palamutes near us so that the monster stays near us. Because there's nothing worse than fighting the monster and it runs to the other end of the arena because the Palamute is over there. Um, the other thing to note about the Rampage quest is that they give a special kind of reward called uh, ramped, uh, uh, Rampage Tickets. I don't know why that was so hard for me to say. Um, but those Rampage Tickets are then used uh, to augment our weapons further, and we'll use one of those in two, uh, excuse me, in two hunts to get a small attack bonus, a small, 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 insignificant attack bonus that I have absolutely no idea if it actually affects the game, but I still get it because I don't do testing. Um, so this is great, Rogi. We just fought one of these, and we're going to fight another one because we like him that much. Oh, please, thank you. Um, but this quest can either go really, really well or really, really poorly. Uh, this is the good spawn. This is the best spawn. Um, everything that we need is right here. And oh, eight of those. Cool. This is my last time to check to see if I needed any more tranks uh, because we get to buy them soon. Um, attacking at the angle there makes him turn, which gives us extra time to put in these attacks. We just want to flinch here before he does this. Nope. But I will immune that using the switch charger. Uh, we didn't get a jump. Uh, this is just the kind of unfortunate thing about Great Rogi is that he is, his main form of interacting with the hunter is a back hop. Um, he's an SNS main if you guys play Monster Hunter. He just likes to back hop everywhere um, and then do his own version of a PR. Switch Charger through that hit. Just try to kind of catch him out of AI here. And once again, um, as long as we're ZSDing, we have super armor, so we can't get knocked off. And as long as I have a decent amount of health, and this lands, nice. nice. All right, so we can try to go for a capture now, because I'm greedy, and I'm going to go for it. You know what? Uh, oh my gosh, I thought you said back off off Remobra. Hello, I'm getting bullied. Can you please run into this, my friend? Nope, that's a roar. Come on, do it. They're dancing around the trap. All right, there we go. One, two. Uh, we don't have much time. All right, there we go. Uh, I'm so happy that you guys got to see the trap dance. Uh, that's when you try to go for a pre-trap, and then the monster's like, oh, that's, there's a trap right there. I'll just, I'll just jump around it a little bit instead of actually getting inside of it like a good animal. Um, I guess that's also something to note. This is a save the animals run, just like by default. We save all of the animals, every single one of them. So if you're a fan of that, you're a fan of this, right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, this is the last hunt of three star before getting to our urgent. Um, this is actually one of my favorite monsters because I love his design, uh, especially in other Monster Hunter games like 3U and Stories. Uh, man, look at all these good spawns. RNG really do be here today. Um, that's fantastic, man. We haven't had a single what I like to call a Narnia spawn, and that's when the monster is, you see that like cloudy area on the very tip of the map? Every monster that we have fought in this area can spawn there. And we just haven't had that. That's awesome. And I can't wait to jinx it on the cotton. You had to say something. I, 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 had, to, I had to give the game kudos, right? Yeah. <gasps> nope, okay. Uh, I was trying to switch charger there to immune that. Okay, we're doing annoying things. Got it. Um, good flinch. We should get a small roar here. Now, the nice thing about uh, Royal Ludroth here is that as long as I hit his arms, his head, or kind of blind, nice. Just get away from that, didn't hit me good. It hit something though, and I switch charger directly back into it, and I lose it, nice. Um, just have to be kind of careful here. I don't have many wire bugs, and I don't know what my flinch rate is right now. I kind of have a, a small understanding of when the monster should flinch, because uh, the file that we're using actually just has that mechanic built in. Uh, it's called exhaust, right? And Oh, man, that flinch out of that attack. Ooh, hello. Um, all right, I lost this, so we're just gonna, we're gonna do this too. Piranhas? There they are. Please stay still. Perfect. So that's a uh, endemic life. Those are the piranhas. Um, the nice thing that we get out of this is two flinches, which helps us set up on the monster again and get a uh, charge state back. Please, thank you. Uh, we're gonna end this one early. So we can morph and charge. Am I directly in line with that? Sure am. This fight is not going well, but this is just kind of a, an example of rampant AI. He's targeting me and the dogs, and it's very unfortunate. And I kind of lost control of this hunt 
uh, really early on just from like inopportune flinches that made me miss ZSDs. Uh, but we're close to finishing it. Don't put me in the wall, please. Thank you. Uh, there it is. So we're going to actually use a shock trap here because I want this done. Don't hit me. He hit me. Uh, all right, now a shock trap. Ooh. All right. Uh, we'll take it. Oh, uh, we'll 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 tolerate it. <laughs> <laughs> that Ludroth was not kind to me or any uh, anyone else here. Um, oh boy, Green, you want to talk about Bishotin? I love Bishotin. He's a perfect little lemur boy. Uh, actually, just... and um, a bit another big checkpoint in the story. Um, Similar to Aknasom, he does unlock something for us after we beat him. In this case, uh, two things, actually. One, it unlocks an upgrade for our weapon, so we'll be able to do more damage and we'll have more sharpness, which it's kind of just a gauge that decreases your damage over time, so we'll have more time before our damage decreases. In addition to that upgrade, it unlocks uh, tranquilizers in the shop, so we won't have to worry about gathering any more items for tranquilizers after we capture Bishan. Um, Bishotin's also a really cool monster. Um, all of his spawns are, like, okay. Um, the, his Area 6 spawn is his best spawn. I also think it's his most, is his least often. Yeah, this is his most often. This is Area 7. Um, he has an, a, an animation where he'll jump up onto the wall, and as long as we hit him once, he'll fall off of the wall, and it makes a huge damage opening. Um, there, I, I, I did this, like, twice in my last two runs um, with, uh, before coming to, to SGDQ. Um, where I caught him in an AI loop, um, where I was leaving a uh, like a like a charged file on his body as he jumped up onto the wall, which knocked him off of the wall, and he just kept doing that. He did it like three times in a row. It was super weird. Uh, we want to keep a wide berth on him too, because if we engage him, we miss the entire roar as a damage opening. Um, I, I don't think I mentioned it, but. Uh, monster Roars do normally stun the Hunter, but we have uh, Earplugs 2, which is a skill that nullifies certain Roars. Um, they're, they're like different tiers of them. It's super... Gosh, I do not like location Roars. We're going to come this way at you. So you kind of aim towards that wall. Yeah, he didn't go the way I wanted him to, but he's in the area that I want him. As long as he's like kind of right here, there he's going for it. He's up on the wall. Let's go. And he's uh, off the wall. Let's go. And land that. One, two. Right back on there. So uh, I'm also timing out the the uh, times that I go in for ZSDs based on the animations. Just want to reposition here because that tail slam hurts. Yeah, and then that's the back pop. He's also an SNS main. Just going to wait here. Dodge in. I missed that. Um, his tail's also a good hit zone, so if I land up on the tail, I'm actually pretty happy with that. Um, it has a really good stagger rate on it, too. Uh, as you can see, we're getting two flinches just off of that one location. And move. Uh, I'm actually going to take this. Yeah, I'm just going to take it normally. Um, so this is our first Wyvern ride. Hey, you get to see this now. Uh, in Sunbreak, they made these optional. Uh, what am I doing? There we go. I hit the wrong button. <laughs> um, but before Sunbreak, these weren't optional. Uh, but actually, um, running the monster into a wall three times creates a knockdown that actually lasts kind of a long time. Enough time for me to get an amp state with Switch Axe. Uh, ooh, nice, nice KO right there. Uh, and then just kind of playing out KO timing. Ooh, that's a oh. cap ready. Uh, so the nice thing about uh, Wyvern Ride 2 is that it keeps the monster kind of in the same spot. Um, as well as just like having a long animation. We can uh, place traps under the monster while it's Wyvern rideable. Um, that the Wyvern riding state actually has higher priority than like trapping a monster, which is super cool and useful for us when we know a monster is trap ready. I'm just gonna grab these and stay in here. Um, I don't wanna miss fanfare skip. It's literally losing eight seconds. It looks so bad. I'd rather just lose two. <laughs> if, I'm gonna, <laughs> if I know I'm gonna lose time, I'd rather just lose two. Um, but I was grabbing those yellow bugs. I actually don't know which ones are thunderbugs. One's thunderbugs and one's flash bugs. And I want that extra thunderbug if it's it's going to be one of them. Um, but that's that's big. So now we are in the last leg of this speed run. We are getting dangerously close. Um, I'm going to let uh, Covert Muffin read off some donations now. 
um, kind of in between each of these hunts, yeah, just so we can read more of that stuff before the run ends, okay? Excellent. Well, we we have a lot of hype building because we are only $12,000 away from $1 million raised. Let's go. We have an anonymous $75 donation that says 1 million hype. We gotta see Sound Vortex. It's a wild rhythm game. And indeed, we have a bonus game still to be unlocked. Sound Vortex Exceed Gear, which is just about $150,000 away. So make sure as we are pushing that 1 mil, that we are putting that towards that bonus game. And indeed, we are continuing the $5 train. This is amazing. $5 from Mr. Aardvark that says, one $5 ticket to the million dollar station, please. No problem, Mr. Aardvark. Thank you for the donation. And we have $5 as well from Grilled Cheese Gamer that says, we need another $5 train. So keep that going, Twitch chat. So remember that thing I said about Narnia spawns? <laughs> it happened. It happened. Um, it's really unfortunate because, especially this one, Sonic Against is really bad because there's no good route to it because all of the things that I want to get on the way there are not on the, the way. Um, Sonic Camp is also an interesting fight. It's the, oh, okay, it just roared immediately. Cool. Uh, welcome to Sonic Camp. This fight is great. Um, it's actually one of my least favorite fights in this game uh, for a couple reasons. One, with Switch Axe, because its body is so low to the ground, uh, sometimes you get forced underground, which will end your uh, zero-sum discharge early. It forces it to uh, finish early. That's bad for us because, uh-oh. Uh Oh, I got very lucky there. Okay, um, I actually got a, I actually got a, a leg topple as it was doing a gigantic explosion attack that would have hurt a lot of me. Um, every part of me would have been, been hurt. Um, so yeah, it, it does. Uh, its body, since it's so low to the ground, uh, likes to go out of, put us out of bound while we're de uh, ZSDing. So that ends the uh, the attack early and does about uh, two thirds of the damage instead of you know the full damage. Oh, it drops that. Let's go. Good flinch and back on it. The other part about it too is that its roar cannot be immune with uh, earplugs. So we actually have to dodge it. Uh, I know, imagine having to use skill uh, in your in your speed runs. Uh, I'm just going to maybe over to this really quick. We're going to do another um, uh, bombing here. Now, normally we would do this in a in a way that would get us a Wyvern ride. Um, one of the things that I wanted to kind of teach myself before this run was menuing that actually IL runners are using right now, uh, which is to activate Wyvern riding in the middle of an attack. Oh my gosh, you are ready. We're just going to shock trap you because you are obnoxious and like to move around too much. One and two. Nice. Perfect. Um, it's actually really good. Uh, I guess the opening to that was a lot better than I thought it was <laughs> uh, because that felt really slow to me. Um, usually we get like a, like a, a topple and a KO on that and then the Wyvern ride and then it's still not cap ready and then you're questioning everything and why you speed run the game and you know, it's just nice that it got to behave for once. Um, if you have more donations, now's a great time to do it. We're trying to do these between each, uh, each hunt. Excellent, sounds good. Yeah, and those donations are still coming in. So keep them coming, folks, as we press on to that 1 million mark. But starting off with $25 from Phoebe that says, you go, Bagel, your first GDQ, and you are doing great. We are all rooting for you in the watch party. Thank you so much, Phoebe. We also have $5 from Shawnee7188 that says, Bagel Bite, shout out to y'all. The most hardworking and kindest mod I have ever had the pleasure of working with. All the best in the run, my friend, and crush that estimate. Donation to his choice. Thank you so much, Shawnee. We also have $5 from Eden that says, $5 train! Tons of my favorite games being showcased like Monster Hunter Rise and Slime Rancher. Good luck to all the runners. May the RNG gods be ever in your favor. Okay, so, ooh, cool, nice. We did it. Just immuting that, and again, oh man, just skill everywhere. Uh, so this is Baryop. He's already doing annoying things. Um, he is a monster that likes to hip check a lot, which turns his entire body into a hitbox. Um, he likes to slide around a lot. He likes to do that a lot. You see that he just doesn't stand still. It's actually a great attack if I was next to it. Uh, but what we're going to try to do is get up an amp state and then just attach ourselves to the monster. And we missed. Uh, immune. Nice. OK, so that switch charger attack has iframes on it. It's not a lot. Uh, this is not the head or the arms. I want to be hitting the head or the arms with this. Breaking those will cause a, uh, a topple. Just want to be very careful here. 
Nice. Okay, good timing there. Um, I'm delaying some of my attacks too to make sure that they line up with like how the monsters swing their bodies. Uh, it's it's just one of those things that you gotta do to adjust. Um, I was really hoping for a roar there, but that works. Nice. Got onto the unbroken arm now, and we're gonna get a head topple. Or we're gonna get a leg break here. Boop. Uh, and land back in. Just gonna try to get a little bit closer to that. Actually, no, no, we're gonna take this. Um, this is a monster that can cause so many problems, so just taking it nicer and easier, right? Taking the uh, control that leads to a large knockdown that gives us a huge opening. Um, and this also does some damage. It's just, we don't do this for the damage. We do this for the uh, large kind of like status that we get here, which is it just kind of flailing around on the ground helplessly. And it is cap ready. Did it go down? Nope, it didn't. Try it again. Once again, just using the Shock Trap because these monsters love to move around. Um, we're, we're out of... We're, we're getting through it. That, that was good. Still a little sloppy. Just hard, hard getting these things started out. But like, you can see how fast these hunts can go if they start out uh, right. We have everything that we need. Um, we don't have any Thunderbugs? Uh, it's fine. Um, Thunderbugs are usually what I use to capture the last monster in the run, and it also means, whoops, uh, we have no more uh, backups. Um, the only backup that we has, have is a pitfall that we haven't crafted in our inventory yet, which we'd like to avoid. Um, but, you know, that's, that's a future Jal problem. You know, we're going to deal with current Jal problems, which is this Rathian. Uh, Green, you want to talk about Rathian really quick? I would love to talk about Rathian. Uh, first off, it's the best color. No, get me um, <laughs> But second, it's very interesting because its head, which is the body part we want to be hitting anyways because it takes the most damage, has an incredibly low threshold to flinch. So as long as we land uh, something like two attacks on the head consistently, it's just going to keep flinching, which means we're especially safe if we're ZSDing it. In addition to that, if we hit that incredibly low flinch threshold while the monster's in the air, it'll actually fall out of the air and give us a very long knockdown. And this monster likes to fly a lot, so we'll be able to take advantage of that. So Narnia again. You guys like the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe? I'm like long... I'm more of a Prince Caspian fan. Myself, yeah, that's, you know? that's fair, that's fair. Um, these, man, when you get these spawns and you're on a really good pace and you just lose randomly 35 seconds, it always feels really good. Uh, hello, can I hit you, please? Thank you. So we're going to want to get all the hits on the head here, like Green was talking about. It does have this kind of low threshold for... Uh, whoa, can we get it? Yeah, we got it. Nice. nice. Yeah, you, we hit the leg. No, 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 we hit the head. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Now we go on the Rathian roller coaster. Uh, we are doing a uh, roar, not a backflip. Can we get a flinch here? That's not a flinch. Oh, that's a flinch. Nice. Oh, flinching out of a flinch. Nice. Uh, do this from neutral. Nope, we just missed that. Immune that. Nice. It's a nice little fancy iframe. Can you fall into this uh, sinkhole? Be kind of cool. No, we'll just get yeah. a KO instead. That's fine. And we'll go for this. Uh, already really good. This is this is actually this is actually great. Uh, didn't time that one exactly right. Oh, kind of missed that. That's unfortunate. But we're gonna go for a leg hit now. Mm. You are capture ready. What is happening? Uh, we're just gonna put this down on the ground and see what happens. I think uh, uh, one, two, three. Uh, we just don't want her to backflip. I'm trying to bait out an AI that's called Runnies. Uh, which just means she will run straight forward by kind of aiming away from her. Nice. Nice. Good job. Um, yeah, AI manipulation is actually a thing in this game. Um, and it was really evident in, in Monster Hunter World, and they use kind of the same same uh, you know methods here. Uh, the bigger the monster, the easier it is to manipulate their AI. Uh, but even on like monsters like Rathian, who has one move that they'll do uh, when they when you're in a specific situation, you can bait out things like that really easily and pull monsters into traps and they don't get to dance around them as much. Um, Muffin, you got any more donations? Oh, we have so many donations and guess what? We are only $9,000 away from hitting 1 million, folks. Okay. Let's go, Do Twitch it. chat. Let's go. We have $25 from Kubaru that says, this month Monster Hunter Rise run has been awesome, as has the entire event. Really enjoying it all. Can't wait for one million, and also can't wait to see that bonus game. So let's put our money towards that. Stay lovely, everyone. 
All right. Yeah, I heard you out there in the audience. <laughs> Woo! You got time for one more? All right, sounds good. Well, we have a $25 from Girthy Garlic that says, I'm so happy and proud to see my favorite series at GDQ. Keep killing it and bless the run. Thank you so much, Garlic. Uh, yeah, I mean, you guys don't have much time left. We've only got like three monsters left to hunt. Uh, this Toby Kodachi, a Volvidon, and then Magna Mallow himself. Um, so I'm not going to slow down, you know. So if you guys want to hit that 1 million mark during uh, Rise, you better, uh, you better... Better pick up the pace. All right, that sounds like a challenge, Twitch chat. Let's go. Uh, okay, no, we'll take that, we'll take that, we'll take that. Um, so, Toby Kodachi here is a very interesting monster. He deals in electricity, uh, which means if we get hit by an electric attack and then get hit again, we'll most likely... Uh, yeah, we take this. Oh. This is fine. Yeah, okay, whatever. Um, we will most likely get stunned. That was very interesting. Uh oh, I get hit by this. I don't get hit by this. I am a monster hunter genius or something. Uh, I do backflip. No, what are you doing? What's happening to you? Just hip check. Just immune that really quick. No, you don't get to play the game. This does a lot of damage to me. Ow and ow. That is half my health, and that is his blue skull. So we're going to be looking to do a capture here. Since we've already used the... Uh, ooh, this is bad. Since we've already used the Wyvern Ride, getting another Wyvern Ride here is not really feasible. Uh, please just keep doing that. Oh, oh my gosh, you're doing, you're doing so many good things. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Toby has super cool AI where he just stands there and yells at you, man. It's great. <laughs> just wants you out of his personal space, but that's not allowed here. That was ESC in George. And no, uh, not even a little bit. All right, we're good on items. I'm just kind of like quickly double checking over there um, to make sure that I am stocked on the things that I need still for the rest of the run. Uh, two monsters left, Volvidon and Magna Mallow. Muffin, take it away. All right, sounds good. Well, we have $25 from non-binary code that says, Legends. Tales of a train, a $5 train, dating back to the time of the mighty Donosaurs. So I say, Dono Roar. Here's five tickets more. Shout out to all the runners, the crew, and Doctors That Borders, SGDQ Hype. Hype. And as ever, trans rights. Well, thank you so much for non-binary code, and look at that, we're only $8,000 away. Come on, Twitch chat. You guys can do this. I was actually really hoping that the uh, the the game would know that you guys were trying to do that, right? Um, Volvidon's ten percent spawn uh, is also his worst spawn. You see that cloud up in the very top of the yeah? That's where he is. That's where he is in the ten percent. And I get that all the time for some reason. And uh, you know, I was I was just thinking like, man, maybe the game would do you guys, but no, we got actually a good spot here. So. Volvidon is a really interesting uh, opener. Um, if I can damage him while he's rolling around at the speed of sound, he's just Knuckles, by the way. Um, if I can just damage him while he's rolling around, uh, yeah, you gonna yell? Yes, you are. One, two, and on the head. If I can damage him while he's rolling, he just falls over, but I don't think I'm gonna give him the opportunity to roll here. Oh, nope, oh. I did. And he <laughs> fell over, look at that. Nice. I missed the head. Uh, on purpose. Yeah. That was no, style. Uh, his head is super hard to hit with Soaring Wyvern Blade. It is such a tight hitbox. Um, but if we can keep up this pressure, we can keep these statuses going, and we can miss the head again. Uh, so we'll have to go for probably four ZSDs here. Ooh, good flinch. And we got onto the back. And once again, rolling and damaging him, and we're ZSDing him. It's just good timing, good AI, good everything. And we're just going to keep... Uh, stopping because mm. he is now Blue Skull. <laughs> um, We're always just kind of looking out for that. If I miss my script, um, I don't really go for free traps. So this is a marathon setting, too. I'm just trying to play a little safe and give you guys some more time, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we are on the last monster. So, uh, Muffin, I'm going to give you one more opportunity to read uh, donations because this is going to be the last monster. All right, Twitch Shower, just over, no, just under 7,000 away. Wow, these donations are coming in, especially a $1,000 donation from Blue Cheetah. 
and they say, Rhythm Block has always been my favorite. Let's get that sound Voltex. And indeed, there is that bonus game that we're trying to unlock, but man, these donations keep coming in, folks, but there's only one boss left. So if you would like to see Jal Bagel celebrate as we hit that one mil, keep those coming in. All right, so let's talk about Madden Mallow here for a bit. So Madden Mallow is the flagship of Rise, of, of Monster Hunter Rise, right? Like, he is the title monster, like, on the cover. He's the big bad. Um, he's not what we would call an Elder Dragon in the series, uh, so that means we can capture him. Um, it's, it's kind of uh, odd to see categories for Monster Hunter end with, uh, uh, with monsters that can be captured, um, you know, especially considering World, which is all Elder Dragons that it ends with. Um, but this monster introduces a really uh, unique mechanic called Hellfire, which actually I just want to mention really quick. Time does come up the moment we capture this monster, so just kind of get ready with that. It can happen anywhere between one to two minutes from now. Um, he has a mechanic called Hellfire, and we can use that to get a free topple. And just like any video game knowledge, um, hit the glowing parts. Yeah, that's it. That's the run. Uh, unfortunate AI there where he aggros on the... Oh, uh, Bulfango there, but we did get that KO. So we're using that Thunder Beetle at the very beginning to get a very easy KO against the monster. That lets us hit the shining part, right? Video game knowledge. Uh, if Mega Man taught me anything, it's hit these glowing bits. Um, we get a tail cut there, non-consequential, really don't care about that. What I do care about is the fact that it's not glowing anymore because new parts begin to glow, and now we're gonna hit those instead. Oh, just missed that. It's uh, unfortunate. So now his arms and his back are glowing. Just need to immune that and not get hit by one of these. He does a lot of damage even with the uh, with the black belt gear, and a lot of what he does is super awkward. Oh my gosh, the dog got the Hellfire topple. Nice. <laughs> So none right, of his parts are glowing anymore. <laughs> we're only 4,000 away from 1 you guys, million. You guys got like maybe, maybe 40 seconds. Oh, come on, Twitch chat. You do not have much time, so if you're <laughs> going to do it, now's the chance to do it. Because he is getting very close. Debate that. Nice. <laughs> that was a very clean switch charger iframe on that backflip right there. That is not easy. Um, to give you kind of perspective, the iframe for that is, uh, what, six frames? At a 60 FPS game? We're just gonna keep up the onslaught here. Even though it's Wyvern rideable, we're not gonna take that. We're just gonna keep going. We can do more damage. That is Blue Let's Skull, go. get ready with time. Oh, that did not do what I wanted it to do. Oh, we're gonna play it safe here. <laughs> um, I was hoping it would give me Hellfire, it, it didn't. 2,000 away? Guys, I swear I'm not throwing on purpose. <laughs> Get ready with time. Do not, do not do it. And time. time. I swear I wasn't throwing on purpose. <laughs> I, sw I swear. It was not intentional. Uh, so that's it. That's Monster Hunter World, uh, Magnum Allo Percent. Um, this is a really fun introductory speedrun category, right? Uh, Monster Hunter games are historically long. Uh, like when World first came out, it was a four hour long speedrun and it was awful. Um, and now it's two and a half and we have a way to skip cutscenes in it. So that's great. Um, so if you are looking into, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so if you are looking into getting uh, into Monster Hunter speedrunning, Rise is a great way to do that. And, um, you know, we're working on resources, and with Sunbreak coming out, there's a lot of new excitement in the community. Um, so you can find more information on that at speedrun.com slash mh. That's the whole series for Monster Hunter, where you can find myself and Green and Johnny also participating in things there, too, and moderating and stuff like that. Joel Bagel, are you ready? We're 250, 200. Oh, my gosh. Come on, let's <laughs> go. 150. You guys can do it, right? I'm let's saying, go. I'm saying Come on. goodbye. Let's, 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 let's do it. Let's go. Let's do it. Yep. That's it! <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Yeah, Twitch chat, let's go! Great job, everybody. Oh my gosh. That is awesome.
Man, you guys have made this so memorable. The first showcase of Monster Hunter, you're hitting this kind of a mile marker on the first showcase. That's awesome, guys. Thank you so much for making me, making us part of that, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, it's really, really, really quick. Um, thank you so much to, to, to my community, the Bagel Shop. Thank you so much to the Monster Hunter Rise speedrunning community. Thank you so much to Javier, the flight attendant that got me my flight this morning and got me here on time to do this run. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, and thank you so much to Johnny and Green on the couch for, for helping me talk about stuff that I know very little about and they know even less about. Um, <laughs> I think that's it. Uh, you can find me on Twitch, but really, guys, thank you so much just, just for, for having me here, for having us. All right, thank you, Jal Bagel, with that amazing Monster Hunter Rise speedrun. What incredible showcase. Wouldn't you agree, audience? <laughs> All right, excellent. And crossing that $1 million milk amount on Thursday is incredible. And we have so many excellent things coming up, especially our two incentives currently, which is going to be including the Step Mania. Uh, bonus modded showcase. So if you want to see Spooty and Friend be able to show off some excellent extra content, keep those donations coming in. But that being said, we'll be right back as we take a quick little break. All right, welcome back to Summer Games Done Quick 2022, powered by Twitch. My screen name is Covert Muffin, your current host for this cast. And wow, what an incredible runs we've seen so far. And it's not over yet, folks. We still have so much awesome content coming your way live here in Bloomington, Minnesota. That being said, we have a ton of donations coming in to that bridged us to that 1 million mark. Thank you so much, not only for hitting that 1 mil mark, but just all of this is going to charity. So if you can just spare $5, $20, every little bit does help. And that adds up and helps save lives all around the world, including this donation, this $1,000 donation from Dan's Gaming. And they say, let's hit that 1 million. All right, and now we have another donation here. 
we have $5 from Crunchy that says, putting this towards that bonus game. And indeed, we have a bonus game that still has not been met yet. So if you have been enjoying this amazing speedrun content, then you indeed continue, could continue to unlock more content to just enjoy there at home yourself. So the bonus game that we are currently working on is the Sound Voltex Exceed Gear, which if you have not seen it, it's absolutely incredible. Just the skill that's involved, the fast-paced action is so unreal. You just have to witness it for yourself. So just make sure that when you send in those donations, you end up putting it towards that bonus game for Sound Voltex Exceed Gear. That being said, we're going to go ahead and throw it over to hear some words from our sponsors. All right, so speedrunning isn't limited to AGDQ and SGDQ. You can watch every weekday night at 7 p.m. Eastern and weekends at 1 p.m. Eastern here on Games Done Quick with Hotfix. We have 22 different shows with specials on the weekends. For more information, go to gamesdonequick.com slash hotfix. And indeed, just as an example, every other Wednesday on Hotfix, you can watch shows like Bargain Bin and Speedruns from the Crypt. And also every other Wednesday, you can watch Mercy Kill and Never Before Seen. Absolutely some of my favorite content on Twitch.tv. We are also so fortunate to uh, have Frame Fatals, which Frame Fatals is a Games and Quicks all women community that aims to spotlight women in speedrunning. The next, yeah, the next Fatals charity event, Flame Fatals, is running from August 21st to the 27th, featuring over 70 hours of speedruns and showcases of various game genres. If you're a woman interested in joining the FF community, DM at Frame Fatals on Twitter. For more information about Frame Fatals, go to gamesdonequick.com slash Frame Fatals. All right, but that being said, it sounds like we do have an interview that is going to be ready featuring the runner Spooty Biscuit for Step Mania. So go ahead and take it away, interview team. Hello, it's me, Kung Fu Fruit Cup. Hope you are all you are all enjoying your Summer Games on Quick 2022. Before we chat with our runners, I wanted to show off a very awesome prize because this is open now through the end of Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. And so I just wanted to let you all know, as a huge Kingdom Hearts fan, this is an awesome, awesome Kingdom Hearts uh, heartless emblem. This is a little stained glass emblem. It's acrylic and birchwood. It's lovely. Oh my gosh, I would hang it anywhere in my house. This is a $20 minimum donation for this. And I just, you know, I just wanted you all to see it. I think it's important for you all to have this information because this is a great thing to donate for along with the charity. <laughs> Super duper cute, I love it. It's uh, it's like perfect. It literally is just made to be super lovely. It's got the hole here so you can hang it up wherever you want and have it, put it in your office, put it in your window. You know, you can have the sun shine through it. Very, very cute. Just wanted you all to know that this is available. Um, but we also have an awesome interview to do. So let's go on over to talk with our runners, Spooty Biscuit and Wendu, who are getting ready to do the upcoming Step Mania, not ITG, um, couples exhibition. How are you two doing? Okay. Oh, <laughs> that sounded like a good thing. Oh my gosh, I'm losing my voice, so sorry. Um, so I wanted to ask you two, this is a couples exhibition. Can you tell me a little bit about what we are all going to be seeing soon? So, um, yeah, if you caught the exhibition back in uh, HDQ 2022, um, we're essentially going to be doing a kind of uh, two players, one controller run of that. What we've got right back here is a double setup two pads side by side and we are going to be playing couples charts um those are charts written specifically to be played by two players we'll be swapping pads and and running past each other all over the place it's a great time awesome yes well i'm super excited to see that i know we have gotten a glimpse of that before it's amazing so i cannot wait to see more of this so then how did the two of you best prepare like i know it's like oh we practice which is i mean obviously that's what you got to do but what would you say are like some of the tips you have for maybe how you work together on like crossing sides or like how how does that best work for you Sure. Um, well, it's, uh, you know, obviously a lot of time just spent learning the charts. Uh, it also helps that I okay. I actually wrote a lot of the charts that you are going to be seeing us play. Um, so, you know, there's okay. a lot of just um, 
just practicing like it like individually, not even just the couple's turns themselves, but like um the game also has a doubles mode where you just play on okay, both tabs good. as one person. And being well versed in that mode helps uh, you know, cross over into cool. the couples mode. Um it's essentially Got just it. doubles, but um you know, sometimes we joke about that couples is actually secretly a PvP mode. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. It's doubles uh, with an obstacle, basically. Sure. Yes, yeah, absolutely. So, okay, so you said you write some of these charts yourself. Okay, how does cool. that work? Like, do you do some of them, like you do the mapping, and how, how do you get that to best fit uh, the both of you? I don't have anything. Okay, here we go. Pretty uh, straightforward editor. It's pretty easy to pick up and learn and uh, learn how to put, place this but the steps down. Um, writing a good chart, you know, uh, compared to just any old chart, you know, is another story. You gotta, blah, you gotta blah, have a lot blah, of experience blah, in the game to kind of know like what patterns blah, work blah, and which blah, ones don't. Words, but um, once you get the hang of it, it's pretty, it's uh, a pretty straightforward blah, process, and it's blah, actually blah, really blah, fun. It's like a really fun creative blah, process. Blah. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Like anything, you're already in this field, so you have that the creative thing, the rhythm thing. So being able to kind of put that into put that. the skill you've already developed must Little be thing, really words. fun to like then make something out of it and be like, I words, want to words, do words. this physically. So I'm going to create something that words. will then be stimulating or be like, you know, challenging for yourself. That's really awesome. Sure. Um, and then to work between the two of you. So I kind of want to move into a Twitter question now, just because uh, we got some really good ones. Turn, yeah, turn um, up again, from at Cassasaur right um, says, how did mask. you two get your start playing okay. rhythm games, and what would you recommend yep. potential players do to start? Cool. Okay, sounds good. I first started playing back all the way in 2001. <laughs> so I oh my gosh. I, just dance games in general for more than half my life. And I don't plan on stopping anytime soon. Wow. <laughs> yeah, feel free to, um, to like stay or go whenever just, you like, need to. Getting into things. Um, oh, sounds good. There's probably like soft mats that you can buy Oof. for pretty pretty cheap. Like I would say around the price of a typical controller, like 20, 30, 40 bucks. Mm -hmm. Just to get your start as far as like how charts feel and like what you're actually doing and what you know, each chart of uh, a sim file wants you to. And yeah, I do want to put out there that the uh, the like community for custom files has been really good lately about um, putting in like a full set of charts, like all the way down to beginner level charts. There was kind of a long stretch, like when custom pad content really started taking off. It was mostly just the best players making stuff for the other best players, but yeah. now it's a lot more accessible than it used to be. Um, and yeah, the soft pads are a good start. Like I even actually just kind of, um, there was just recently an online tournament and just to kind of make a point, cause a lot of, a lot of players try to, you know, say like, oh, soft pads are worthless. They think you can't do anything worthwhile on them. I just to prove a point, pulled out my soft mat from my garage that had been sitting there for like 15 years uh -huh. and asked one of the highest difficulty charts in the, in the event using it so like it's even even if you're on a budget even if you're on a budget you can get a way to play you know to jump into uh four panel dance games yeah pretty easily. absolutely i mean honestly okay growing up i had my soft pad and i would duct tape it to the floor just to keep it in place and you know what it worked great so i think that's a perfect recommendation like start small and work your way up and then plus there's a lot of um custom charts in all kinds of rhythm games, especially games like this, that, yeah, you can experiment with and, you know, try different ones that suit your style and work from there. I don't know. That's kind of my addition. Uh, now, before I let you go, I did want to um, do another quick one. This is from at Daiki, who Daikai, um, who says, uh, hey, Windu, how are you enjoying your birthday? Happy birthday from Backroom. <laughs> Thanks, Daiki. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I... Couldn't really ask for anything more. Like our showcase just handed, what happened to land on my birthday. Right. And that card fell really nicely, and I'm just I got food cooked for me by uh, by Smoothie. So oh. it it's been really awesome. It's been an awesome day. 
Good, great. Well, I think it's like perfect. You got your food, which is like, you know, always like the way to somebody's heart. And then you get to show off some of your amazing skill coming up in this showcase. It's going to be awesome. Like, again, we've gotten to see some of this before, some step mania. And just knowing that you two have practiced on this, I can only imagine the level of difficulty we are going to be witnessing tonight. So everybody, please stick around and catch this run. Thank you two so much for chatting with me. Really appreciate it. Really, really looking forward to the exhibition. And again, happy birthday, Windu. Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, everyone. I'm going to hand it back up to the host and uh, thank you all for tuning in. Please stick around for that. Also, congrats again on the 1 million. Holy moly. So exciting. We'll see you soon. <laughs>